So as uh, I said, the second fight of the night is Daniel Cassell. He's from Wolfpack MMA. Bouncing around outside the cage, definitely looks eager to get inside. Yeah, well, in it comes. A little bit heavier this bout, bouncing around, looking ready to go. comes his opponent, it's uh, James Barrett, oh, I said he's from Combat MMA. in there now from the first bout going up from 80 kilos to 90 kilos like I said again this is a it's an amateur bout which means obviously no headshots on the ground no headshot standing James Barrett, definitely the local fighter. Quite a bit more support. Well, here we go. Just getting the last rules. Last bit of a pep talk from the referee before they get into the action. Gone up in weight a little bit here, safe. Gone up from 80 kilos to 90 kilos. Yeah, I think uh, it looks like they're both ready to come and compete, so we'll see where this takes us. I had the opportunity of speaking with both fighters earlier on. Uh, Daniel Cassell said he's been training for 20 months, and it looks like he's using his uh, grappling to his advantage. Yeah, he does, yeah. It looks like he got stuck into the action a little bit quicker. 
you know, does look a strong individual as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't think James looks phased by it. He seems like he's got the underhand going through and he's going to hopefully work his way around the cage and spin off. Yeah, he's got the underhooks, yeah. It, 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 does, it does look like he's, uh, he's quite confident on his feet. He's, he's got quite good cage, cage defence in respect of, you know, stopping the takedown by the looks of things. Yeah, I think uh, one good thing there was he's got his balance, so he's able to be composed and neat at the same time whilst Daniel was working him around the cage. Yeah, if I was Daniel, I'd probably, you know, trying to make a quick shoot for one of his legs, you know, to try and take him down, you, you know, because he does look quite confident against that cage wall. Yeah, I think that's his uh, game plan. It seems like he just wants to get him in there, get him against the cage, work the knees, work the body and soften him up. Yeah, you know, from... I would agree with you, from a little bit we have seen so far, I would say that James does seem to be a little bit more confident, you know, stopping the takedown. Yeah, I think they're working well. James trying to get the wizard through, trying to get his arm through, getting double unders at the same time, which is good. And at the same time, Daniel is staying active. Yes, I would, I would, I would agree with you there. Daniel, Daniel definitely is, obviously, pushing the pace a little bit more. I think Daniel needs to be a little bit careful when he breaks free and goes for the shots with his hands because they're getting very close to the head, bear in mind that this is an amateur bout. Yes, it is, yeah. I, I've, seen the re I've seen the referee stepping us on a couple of occasions, but, you know, there he goes. It's a good take down there from uh, Daniel. Brilliant take down. They both exchanged some knees. Daniel was able to lower his levels and lift him up and slam him down. But Jim was careful and also get, made sure that he was in his guard and not go around to side mount. Yeah, what is good is Daniel's doing the same thing. He's just as active on the ground as he has been standing up as well. If he's looking to basically, you know, take the first round by points, he's obviously working as far as the judges are concerned. I'd say he's trying to work towards making them decide. Definitely in my favour, I am the harder worker. I think Daniel uh, may appear like he wants to weather the whole storm that Jim's brought and also carry on fighting, putting the pressure on because he might see him this going through to a three, three minute round. Mm, yeah, there is that possibility. He's definitely trying to push the pace, whether he's, he's active inside his guard, now he's looking like he's trying to pass that guard and come round. Is Daniel now. Well, when I spoke to Daniel earlier, he said one of his uh, legends is Brock Lesnar. He loves the way he wrestles and he's a big fan of wrestling. And he showed that in uh, the first couple of minutes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, he, he definitely has. Out of the two, he's, uh, you know, he's definitely put a little bit, few more percent in there as far as his work ethics is concerned. Yeah. I think he's done really well. It looks like the first round, Daniel's worked really hard, kept the pressure on him kept him against the cage Jim has also tried to swivel off the cage throwing a couple of knees they've exchanged knees Daniel got a huge takedown which will be in his favour in the eyes of the judges yeah without, without a doubt you know main thing is that I think in all honesty what, is, what does look good about this is they do look quite evenly matched in respect of obviously you know their uh, level of experience I think that's why it's as active as it is yeah, James Barron, I know him quite well. He's been training uh, for about a year and a half. Uh, similar to Daniel, he said he's been training for 20 months. And I think it's showing that they're both staying active and they, they're both trying to get uh, ahead of each other in the game. But I think Daniel at this stage, it seems a little bit more confident, both stood up and on the ground, he's keeping good posture on him. Yeah, without a doubt. This is the bit that I like to look at, especially from commentary side anyway, when, you know, it's about the diesel, you know, you can have a look after one round, you can see, you know, are they holding themselves the same? Are they blowing a little bit? Are they grabbing for a bit of gas? Too much gas, you know? I think they, they, look, like, they look ready. They're both bouncing around. Daniel's bouncing. Jim's got his hands up, so we'll see where this takes us. Okay, into the action again. Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, from what I've seen, Daniel trying to do the same thing again. He, you know, he's trying to push the pace. But James, to me, looks like he, he, he's come out with a little bit more, you know, electricity inside him this round yeah he did really well he came out really strong uh, got him against the cage uh, Daniel was quite savvy and able to spin him and now he's got control of James against the cage yeah yeah what I would say is you know as much as uh, James is you know he, he, he can stop himself getting taken down Daniel's really doing a good job of keeping him pressed up against that cage right and at the end of the day the longer Daniel can keep him pressed up against there the less action you know that James is going to be able to obviously you know put obviously put his way yeah, the opportunity is there for James uh, on various occasions because they've been in the centre of the cage. It would appear that Daniel's more dominant and uh, confident against the cage. 
Yeah, without a doubt. He's there again working for the takedown. And if he's not working for the takedown, he's still active. There he goes again. And there he is. He's successful with his takedown. Great ta takedown. That will look good in the eyes of the judges. Oh, without a doubt, you know. And he's already now setting up to try and see if he can start either passing the guard. He's trying to get mobile. He's trying to scoot that one leg through. You know, but James, James, just like up against the cage, he has got good ground defence. Yeah, he, he had an opportunity there. He had a uh, half butterfly. Good, and there's, and there's a pass safe and there's the pass. Yeah. Looking for north-south. Now he's got that. Changed again. Put a couple of knees in there. Now he takes the... He's got the mount. He's got a half guard on him, though, as James. Yeah, that surprised me, did that, from uh, the side. He mm, kind of jumped mm. into the guard. He, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. Yeah. I think James is working his legs really well, but at the same time, he needs to work his upper body yes, and be he, able to move his core. Yeah, without a doubt. Because, yes, he is obviously controlling him. That's a great oh, reverse. Man, great man. reverse from James. Yeah, just got his sent a little bit too far over the Daniel. And then there, there came the reversal. I think James felt it against his body and thought, right, here's an opportunity. I'll just use the strength in my arm. And he's been fortunate enough to land against the side of the cage. Yeah, so. without a doubt, without a doubt. Good upper body strength there shown by Daniel to get himself back up standing again. Yeah. I think James might have been a bit more too relaxed there because he tried to go for an arm bar. And whilst he's tried to spin around, Daniel's been able to get to his feet and got to his optimum position. And that looked like a low blow, did that? Yes, it did look a little bit low, to be quite honest, you know. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it caught him straight on, and James in the sort of chap to uh, to not say it is if it isn't. So he's done really well. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, obviously, you know, and we, I know it's Friday the thirteenth today, and there's, there's, people get a bit of bad luck, but that kind of luck you don't want inside the cage. Yeah, yeah. I think James is ready. He's kind of speaking to the ref. Uh, I'm not sure what words are being exchanged here. There seems to be an air of uh, determination in James's eye after he got that low blow. Oh yes, without a doubt. There's a, without a doubt. Yeah, I, I would definitely say I think say that this round is, is is a little bit closer, really, a little bit harder to call, right, than the first round. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, even at the end there, James was able to get both uh, underarms through, still control and stay active, even though he had his back on the cage. Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, I would say is, is if the fighters could. Uh, could hear anything that we were saying I'd say you know one of them in this last round definitely has to really kind of stamp his authority down and you know really impress the judges if I was them that's what I'd be I'd be looking to do because it is reasonably close I would say you know we don't know what the judges what they call is but you know from what I see I think it's it is still quite close I'd have to agree there. Uh, the first round, I kind of swayed towards Daniel. This round, it could go either way. Mm -hmm. You should never leave it in the hands of the judges. It's one of those where, you, as a fighter, you get tunnel vision in there. You're not sure what's going on, so you just got to assume that it's against you, so you need to make sure you win this last round. No, without a doubt, you know. One of them, either you never know, one of them might go for the quick takedown, try and control, keep, keep them controlled on the ground and score and try and win the ground outright, you know. Yeah, I think that, that, that could be a, a good game plan. Uh, I think James, what he needs to do is keep off the cage. If his back is on the cage, uh, that will give Daniel confidence to do what he's been doing in the mm, last two rounds. Mm, without a doubt, without a doubt. Well, OK, let's have a look at the strategy at this last round. I think James seems a little bit more cagey. He seems to be stepping back, but he's coming flying with that knee. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think one of them really has to make stamp something down make a real good impression say this is my round I, I know the other two have been close but I've definitely taken one well that's right it's one of those where you've got to give it everything and you've got to commit and don't hold back too much because by holding back you can give an opportunity to your opponent yeah without a doubt all that hard work yeah I think obviously you know there James has gone to the ground I think he's more so a case of obviously the force of obviously Daniel throwing him to the left yeah, Daniel was clever. He was like a matador. He was able to move around and be able to swivel on his feet and uh, allow James's direction to head off towards the cage and take him down. And he's active from on top as well. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, you know, let's see if he uh, if he if he's worked his own strategy out. If he did get the takedown, regardless of how it happened, can he basically stamp himself down on this round and say, yeah, I've won the majority of this. I think Daniel would be thinking, it looks like he's thinking, I need to keep on top, keep the pressure on, 
maybe not even um, go for submissions and, and keep himself nice and tight and James uh, needs to be working his way out of there or either using his legs uh, to achieve a submission yeah no yeah no yeah I'd agree with that yes I mean at the same time I can see James won't surprise me if he gets a sweep going on there because I have seen he's, he has got some good movement on the ground. Yeah, he's in optimum position there. The other lad's core is forward, so he can use that half butterfly to lift him up with his right leg and be able to sweep him. Yes, yes, yeah. There's his opportunity. You know, like when Daniels there throws his centre right up in the air, you know, James should be, he's got his feet hooked in, he should use that for a second and, and use him jumping out and sweep him and turn him over. Yeah, Daniel seems very confident, very confident in his movement and transitions. James is trying to escape, but it, it would appear that Daniel's a lot more confident on the floor. Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. There's a bit more defence, to be quite honest, coming from James here than Daniel. I think James might be able to turn this, uh, unfortunately. Unlucky, gonna... unlucky. There's a nice bit of chest there coming in. Just didn't work out all his way. Yeah. Looks like that. Looks like Daniel's got a guillotine in there. Looks... I it looks like he's going for the arm roll as well now, does James? Yeah, yeah, he's trying. He's, he's trying. definitely trying, Safe. He's definitely trying. I think it's one of those, Andy, if he stays in this position, uh, it won't go in favour of James, who's on the bottom. And both have been working, but it would appear that Daniel's been working a little bit harder in this round. Yeah, yes, without a doubt. I think, like you said, Safe, you know, he's just spent too much time, James, really, you know, in this position, you know, looking at the ceiling. And Daniel's obviously taking advantage of that. He could have laid there and not done very much, but he actually has been working as Daniel. Yeah, I think it would appear that it, this is going to be left in the hands of the judges, so we'll see what happens with that. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, overall, uh, Andy, I think that was a, a good fight. They were well matched. Uh, uh, they were both working, stood up and uh, on the floor, regardless of what position they were in. Yes, yeah, like, like, yeah, you're right, Safe. Like I said, Safe, they, do, they did look like they were really well matched, to be quite honest. That's why it was a lot of chess going on and some to and fro -ing. But obviously, that's why it's gone three rounds, probably. Yeah. We'll wait, and, we'll wait and see what the judges come up with, and uh, hopefully they'll come up with the right decision. Perfect, perfect. Well done, good fight, three hard rounds, and he got the right decision at the end of it.